Hello, my name is Adam Winstock and I'm the founder and director of the Global Drug Survey. In this small presentation, I want to take you through one of the highlights of the survey, which was how people use cannabis and what people thought would be the perfect stone. So we had a fantastic response this year. We had almost 80,000 people from around the world and an awful lot of those people, not surprisingly, smoke cannabis. Now, of course, like any study, there's some limitations. This is a self-nominating sample. This is not a random group of people. But importantly, for the purpose of this particular presentation, this is a group of people who know and many love their cannabis. The most common way of using cannabis around the world is smoking. 85% of people smoke joints, a far smaller number of people smoke cannabis through pipes and water bongs. But one of the really interesting things around cannabis is it's the combustion of cannabis, which is the thing that releases all the harmful chemicals and cancer-causing nasties. Now, one of the things that really increases the harm when you smoke cannabis is whether or not you mix it with tobacco. So one of the questions we asked this year was simply, do you mix tobacco with your cannabis when you smoke? And what you can see is the one country in the world that seems to have the smartest cannabis smokers in the world is America, where less than 10% of cannabis smokers mix with tobacco. So they get absolute gold star for not increasing the lung harms by smoking with tobacco. I mean, the Kiwis are pretty good as well. Only 20% of those smokers use tobacco. You can see pretty much though across the rest of the world it's around 70 or 80 percent of cannabis smokers use tobacco and that goes for the countries where we had really big numbers as well as countries like Spain, Portugal uh, and Scotland where we had slightly smaller numbers. The thing I want people to take away from this is that the safest way of using cannabis is probably to use a vaporizer and that heats cannabis up to a temperature where the THC is released in the vapor but you don't get the smoke containing all the cancer causing chemicals and, and tars and other nasty things. But if you are going to smoke, then it's smoking in a cigarette paper with no tobacco and a small roach. If you want to find out a bit more about safer cannabis use, then I'd suggest you have a look at the Global Drug Survey Highway Code, which is on our website. The other interesting thing about cannabis, of course, is that there's many, many preparations. Uh, and over the last decade, we've seen an increasing dominance of high potency indoor grown cannabis. But there are other sorts of um, preparations. There's normal bush weed, um, there's resin preparations, and we're also starting to see the growth of oil uh, and various things such as butane hash. Now, across the world this year, the most popular form of cannabis was high potency cannabis. Um, and the one that people thought was most harmful for their lungs was resin. But what we were really interested in, particularly with the dominance of high potency cannabis, was whether or not that was actually what people wanted to smoke. And so this year, with the help of many colleagues and many people who smoke dope, we came up with a profile of 20 characteristics that would allow us to describe the effect of the cannabis that people smoke now and the cannabis that people would like to smoke in an ideal world. So in the next three slides, I'm just going to give you a snapshot of what smokers in America, the UK and the Netherlands thought of the high potency cannabis that they smoke now versus the ideal cannabis. And the reason this is really important is that as we move towards regulation of cannabis in many countries, there's the possibility of growers now starting to respond to what people want. So I'm going to scan through these fairly quickly. And I guess this is about, well, what's the perfect stone? So this is the Netherlands. Now, of course, in the Netherlands, you can buy any sort of cannabis you want. This happens to be people rating high potency cannabis and that that bars in the blue. And what you can see from this slide is that the perfect cannabis would be one that has far less negative effects, lower rates of restlessness, less hangover, less paranoia, less harmful effects on the lungs, less effects on memory, you know, less distraction. But at the same time, would be a cannabis that had greater sensory perception, would allow people to function better, would allow people to giggle a bit more, would make them feel more confident when they talk to people, a little bit more relaxation, generally a bit more pleasurable. And that profile is repeated in every country we looked at. And it's exactly the same in the UK. Again, there is a difference between what people want to smoke and actually what they're forced to smoke through the dominance of high potency cannabis. And we see this in the US as well.
the thing that's really interesting. All of these things down here are really related to THC. What people are describing here is effects that are related to higher amounts of THC, but the unwanted effects are also due to higher effects of THC. I think what this comes down to is the majority of high potency forms of cannabis basically have between 10 and 16 percent THC but very little CBD. CBD is that component of cannabis that's responsible for the calming, settling effects of cannabis. What this work basically says is that the ideal cannabis would be one that had a little less THC but more CBD. And with the clever horticulturalists and botanists around the world, I'm certain that we can move towards that. The other thing that Global Drug Survey will be doing with this data is also profiling how different people describe their perfect cannabis. Because my guess is cannabis will just be like people who drink red wine and beer. Everyone will have a slightly different preferred cup of tea. We've thought about the harms related to how you smoke cannabis. We've thought about the perfect cannabis. But the other problem for many cannabis smokers is that it's against the law. And unfortunately, in some countries, if you get caught with cannabis, bad things can happen. And in fact, the worst place to get caught with cannabis is America. It wasn't the place you were most likely to get caught with cannabis. In fact, that was Belgium and Switzerland. But if you got caught with cannabis, then actually you didn't really want to be in America or Hungary because over a one in five people who got caught with cannabis in America, it had a negative impact upon their travel. Over 20% it had an impact on their employment. And just under 20% it had an impact on their ability to study. So for the sake of being caught with a spliff, it would have had unbelievably negative effects on their life. And we can see that in other countries it's also not plain sailing. Hungary, Denmark, Australia, New Zealand, so across the world, despite the fact we're moving towards a place where cannabis might become regulated, people are thinking about decriminalization, there are probably tens of thousands, possibly hundreds of thousands of people who are being impacted on negatively simply by being found in possession of a bit of cannabis. Uh, not surprisingly, in Portugal, um, you know, there were relatively um, lower levels of impact, but not completely without negative consequences. An island, which as some of you might remember, had the most expensive cannabis in the world, it was also a pretty lousy place to get caught. Um, I think cannabis is a fascinating drug. It will be continue uh, to be something the Global Drug Survey looks at. But if you're interested in some of our other highlights, please look at the work done by our uh, 17 media partners around the world, or look on our website where we've got presentations on drug price, value for money, alcohol and the deluded drinker, the risks of going to emergency treatment, and of course, uh, the whole issue of the internet research chemicals and legal highs. If you'd like to find out how your own drug use compares to everyone else, why don't you go to drugsmeter.com.